Um, we talked about the trust issue, and there's some yep. very interesting surveys out there on trust. Uh, Gallup did a survey. There's a drop across the board in trust in all institutions, except law enforcement, which is very interesting. Um, Congress, sorry for my friends there, is the lowest. Uh, media is down there almost as low as Congress. <laughs> Those that rank the highest were small business and the military. So this low media rank, is that fair or is that being manufactured as part of a culture war? Uh, oh, it's fair. There. I mean, it's entirely fair. I mean, it, it's, I think that one of the things that we've seen for both good and bad, the, the, the fragmentation of media is a result of systemic distrust in the media, and that's existed for a very long time. I mean, that's nothing new. Uh, and I think that it's completely fair for people to look at the media. I know there are people on the left who think that the media is too right-wing. Right? Uh, obviously, we on the right think that, that the media is far too left-wing. Um, but I think that, that that sort of distrust in media sources is very often justified. I think that we're requiring more of people than we used to in the past, because once people have realized that there's an inherently political angle to how people cover the news, now we're asking them if you want a full, rounded diet, you actually have to choose it yourself. Right? You have to cultivate yourself to watch The Young Turks and then watch my show and decide who you agree with and where there's sort of a common locus of fact. That's the fact and everything else is the opinion. That's asking a lot of viewers where we didn't used to ask very much of viewers at all, right? You just turn on the evening news and buy whatever Walter Cronkite is saying, whether it's true or not. Um, I, I think most Americans waking up to that is a good thing. Uh, the systemic lack of trust in media has some bad downstream effects sometimes because when there are no gatekeepers, there are no gatekeepers. So I like the fact that there are no gatekeepers because I think the, the gatekeepers were very often biased, but without gatekeepers, sometimes bad stuff gets through. Yeah, I mean, I think... Nicely put, concise, precise, you know, what Ben basically is saying is sort of the same thing that I believe in, I guess most of you out there probably believe in too. Uh, basically is that, look, we're when we're born, we're raised with certain values, certain morals, cultures, you know, those kind of things, all right? We all put them together, mix them around, it's a nice little recipe. And then we basically have our... You know, where we are fall on the uh, on the spectrum, you know, conservative, liberal, you know, somewhere in the middle. And then we gravitate to what? To those things that we like. The thing that I stress all the time is I love to watch. I love to watch MSNBC and CNN and CNNBC and Fox, the Young Turks, uh, you know, shows that are like, you know, progressive, you know, on the left. I like to watch. Uh, other shows that we would say basically maybe have a little bit more of a conservative, you know, more on the right, like, you know, um, The Daily Wire, um, you know, uh, you know, The Blaze, um, you know, obviously Rush at the time, uh, any of those, you know, Mark Levin, um, you know, Sean, uh, uh, you know, um, Laura Ingram, obviously. So we watch it. And then, you know what? We basically a lot of times we agree. Sometimes we don't agree with them. Um, many times are when we're watching the shows that are from the left or a progressive standpoint, okay? We just basically, their opinions, uh, their policies, we just take a look at it and say, there's just no way we can accept that. But that's up to us. And as Ben basically said, is that, you know what? We, If you want that full rounded diet, you have the ability now to go and turn, tune things in or tune things out. Let's see what Anna has to say about this. that right now we're experiencing people existing in various filter bubbles. So uh, if you are, for instance, uh, consuming most of your news online, if you like a particular brand of programming, uh, if you, let's say, lean more conservative and you're watching mostly conservative news, algorithms offer up more and more conservative news. And so when you get a if you have preconceived notions and all of a sudden you're hearing or reading something that challenges those preconceived notions, you're going to have a negative reaction to it. And you see that playing out across the board. I'll give you an example. I mean, I have family members who are constantly consuming news online. Um, my mom's a good example, right? She's, uh, you'd be surprised she's my mom because she's on Facebook. She clicked on a link to, let's say, the Daily Wire. Perfect example. Well, Facebook is going to be offering up more Daily Wire type content and then all of a sudden when she's watching the Young Turks she'll be like well you know I read on Facebook or I read on the Daily Wire whatever uh, that X Y and Z happened and you're wrong right um, that conversation doesn't actually happen that often but I'm giving you an example I was hopeful example, there for a second right? and so, <laughs> so 
Look, there are all sorts of issues with the media, right? I mean, the, the media for the longest time completely ignored the very real frustrations that workers have been feeling in this country. I mean, the Federal Reserve released data indicating that nearly half of Americans can't even afford a $400 emergency. At the same time, you tune into CNN, CNBC, MSNBC, I mean, it doesn't matter, across the board, and they're like, the economy is doing great. Uh, you know, we're seeing uh, record growth, and what they're specifically talking about is the stock market. But the stock market is disconnected from the reality that the majority of workers are experiencing. So I, I, I just have to stop this here right now. When she's talking about the stock market disconnected from the reality of most of the workers that are out there, I tend to disagree on this because, first of all, many workers that are working for companies, they have 401k plans that are either being partially um, sub, not subsidized, but, you know, uh, the workers, I mean, the, the corporation is paying into a part for their 401k retirement plan. I'm talking about those workers now that are working for a larger company that offers these plans to their employees. So they are, and there are millions of them that are involved in the stock market. And nowadays, we've been hearing this so often that it is so easy that more and more people are getting to the stock market. These are the everyday people, average ordinary citizens, young people with the cryptocurrency, you know, getting on um, Robinhood and all these other platforms that literally, um, this, with this thing here, you get on here, you put the app on, any brokerage account that's out there, put your money inside there, boom, you're off to the races, okay, you start trading. And that's what they're doing. And then there are a lot of workers that are putting that, you know, now with many brokerage accounts are allowing you to buy fractional shares. So I think what Anna is, Anna is talking about is that it being completely, you know, uh, away from the workers and has nothing to do with it. I think that's absolutely, you know, I would counter that to say, I completely disagree with that. I think that that type of stuff leads to uh, people feeling, you know, distrustful toward the press. At the same time, they exist in these filter bubbles and have their preconceived notions. It's hard to challenge that. So there's a lot of different things happening at the same time. I don't blame people for not being so trusting of the media. One other thing that I'll note is that the incentives are always in the wrong place. The kind of stories that I want to talk about on the Young Turks and do talk about on the Young Turks get no attention. They don't do well in terms of the number of views. I want to talk about international news. I want to talk about what's happening in Brazil. I want to talk about what's happening in Ecuador. It'll get like maybe 40,000 views at most. You know what gets a lot of views? I don't know. Anna Kasparian destroys this person. Or here, here's the latest cat fight. Like, I hate it. It's garbage. It's garbage. Because it leads to people not trusting the press, but at the same time, the profits are there. The money is there. And I think you see that play out across the board, whether you're talking about cable news or online media. Uh, you know, and at the, at the dinner table, we're having an interesting conversation. So just to end this, I think this part, uh, in part four here, um, I think basically was a draw. I think they both made their points uh, in terms of um, what they felt like. It seems that Anna always likes to go right back to the workers, which can be appreciated. I mean, you know, she's got her, you know, opinions on that. But sometimes I think it's, she's so, you know, so much with the workers that she fails to realize that without the people that started the businesses and put in the capital, took the risk, took the loans to start the business so that the workers could be there. I mean, where would the workers be? And then you could take the corollary that where would the business be without the workers, you know, which came first, the chicken or the egg or whatever. But essentially in in, in this uh, in this part here, I, I think it was basically, you know, a tie. I think they both got their parts across. As I said, I mentioned before, I would have just, um, if it came back to me and they allowed, you know, for additional uh, time, I would have probably uh, raised a question in terms of uh, to Anna about the stock market, you know, not being directly tied to uh, to the workers um, that, you know, she basically said that, you know, they really don't care. That has nothing to do with them at all. Uh, the other thing is, you know, but listen, um, I love to watch the Young Turks. I like to see uh, the opinions, you know, that Anna puts forth. She's bright. Um, she's savvy. Um, 
she's one of the few <laughs> liberal women out there, okay, <laughs> that uh, not only has some brains, but is, uh, you know, beautiful as well. So listen, but policy-wise, I would say 90% of the time, we're pro- I would say 90% of the time with the Young Turks, with Anna, diametrically opposed. And I'm sure there's probably somewhere 5 to 10% of agreement that we can come on. Anyway.